A very good uh, day to everyone. And uh, okay, so let's begin our uh, class. Now I'm going to introduce you chapter six, which are now, uh, I mean, uh, is a very uh, a sensitive, I can say, sensitive, interesting, a very uh, 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 insightful uh, chapter. Right at this moment, which is uh, immunization chapter six, immunizations. Okay, so in this uh, chapter six, uh, I will introduce you about the principle of immunizations, types of vaccines, and also uh, what is uh, adjuvants. All right, so what is adjuvant? So I'm going to cover all these three parts in uh, my uh, my uh, lecture today. Okay, so uh, immunizations. Okay, immunization. What is immunization basically? Okay, so I put it here. I can see. Okay, uh, let me change this one first. Let's go from here. Okay, so immunization is the process of providing immunity artificially, right? Artificially, it's not naturally. So you have to. Uh, uh, Take the immunizations, all right, from outsource, not from, uh, not from your, uh, your, not from your system, not your from your body system. So you have to take it, uh, outside from an outside outsource, so it can be injected into your body body systems. So that's why we call it artificials. Okay, immunization also a process that increase. An organism's reaction to an antigen thereby improving the organism's ability to resist or overcome infections. Okay, so there is uh, until some extent that uh, you know uh, we need to introduce a foreign substance or foreign antigen to our body, so that our body have a, a, like a shield in the future. So like, like a shield uh, for a future uh, infection per se. So, for example, you take immunizations to, for that particular disease. Okay, so in the future, if the disease try to infect your body systems, your body already have a shield, all right? So the, the, the disease or the antigen cannot be activated uh, uh, and give harm to your uh, body uh, body systems. Okay. So it's the techniques to use to induce and in respond to a specific disease in humans by exposing the individual to an antigen so i will explain it to you later on in order to raise the antibody to the particular antigen so basically when we immunize so when we introduce a foreign substance to our body so the concentrations of specific antigens what the antigen will be uh, increasing okay right so what is definitions of immunity okay so the immunity is the mechanisms right to provide uh, the animal with the capacity to recognize any sort of foreign materials for itself to neutralize eliminate or metabolize them without with or without injury to its tissue okay so uh, any kinds of measurements that our body system have to take in order to neutralize, eliminate, or metabolize the uh, foreign substance, basically. Okay, so immunity, if you rem remember on chapter one, right, the day I introduced you the Im immunology uh, subject, I already introduced you a little bit on immunity, right? So they can divide it into two parts, which is the first one is active uh, immunity that, that we produce uh, our own antibody. And the other one, the second one is the passive, uh, known as ready made antibodies that are injected into our body. And in active uh, immunity, it can divide it into two. There is two sources to acquire the active uh, or, or, 
or own uh, antibody. The first one is natural. It means uh, from exposure to infectious agents or artificial by immunizations. And for the passive immunity also, they have a two ways uh, to get it. The first one is natural uh, from uh, maternal antibodies from your mom to your uh, baby right? Uh, uh, during pregnancy. And the second one is artificial okay? antibody from other source. All right, this is that been injected into your uh, body. So this is the passive artificial immunity. Okay, don't worry, we're going to you know undergo it one one by one. Okay, the first one is uh, active immunity. Okay, active immunity, when the body is stimulated to produce its own antibody due to actual illness or vaccination. So there is a two. Uh, 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 types that can trigger the active immunity. The first one is actual illness. Lah. Actual illness means that uh, the fever that you get naturally, you know, for example, coughing, you, you got your, uh, uh, let's say, a diarrhea, for example. Okay, so those are actual illness. And the second one is vaccinations. Vaccination through you know, uh, uh, vaccines, in injections. Okay, that become a very sensitive nowadays when we talk about vaccination. I'm going to talk about the uh, COVID vaccination uh, later on uh, at the end of this uh, 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 chapter. Okay, <laughs> it may take days or weeks to develop but may be long lasting even life lifelong. Okay, so in active immunity as already emphasized uh, during all my classes, okay, it will take time but it will last a long term okay so the key words for active immunity basically is the long term okay even though it takes a day it takes a weeks to develop but once it's developed it will be a lasting even lifelong okay there's a two types of active immunity the first one is natural and the second one is uh, artificial okay let's go to natural natural immunity first Okay, so the body are exposed to an antigen by getting the disease. Right? The body produce a memory cell which make it immune to a disease in the future. So, yeah, for example, you get a fever, right? The fever caused by a toxin from a bacteria. So those toxins uh, can stimulate or trigger the production of plasma, plasma cells. Uh, it can stimulate the knife B cells to go and undergo proliferation and differentiation into plasma cells and also a memory cells. Okay, so these memory cells uh, later on uh, uh, will remember uh, the types of toxins that uh, secret by the bacteria that cause you to get a, a fever. Okay. So example here, they put it while infection, for example, with hepatitis A virus or non HAV, and subsequent recovery give rise to a natural active immune response, usually leading to lifelong protections. So for, for the first in infections, okay, so of course you will get some fever, you get some headache, you get some a few symptoms. And later on, when your antibody already develops towards the HAV, and you know the, the subsequent uh, infections uh, will uh, 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 naturally active your immune, and most probably you will not get a severe symptoms. Okay, maybe like you no know, one day or two days the fever and that's it. Okay, as compared to the first infections, you might get one week, one and a half weeks of fever. Okay, so a bit longer as compared to uh, the second subsequent infections. Right, next is uh, active artificial immunity. Okay, the injection that caused the body to be exposed to the harmless antigens and produce antibodies and memory cells long-lasting and possibly lifelong protections <clears throat> okay so this is uh, uh, how to say uh, 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 a 
sensitive uh, topics nowadays because you know uh, uh, pharmaceutical company um, in the race to produce uh, uh, this artificial immunity for COVID nineteen. Okay. So basically, they have to go a several phase or a preclin of start from preclinicals, and you have they have to go a, a few phases uh, before uh, the developed vaccines is approved by FDA. So I'm going to touch a little bit on COVID nineteen as well. Okay, so this is a types of uh, artificial immunity that can that you will get. You know, uh, the first one from anti anti uh, activated microbes, living harmless non virulent strain of microbe, for example, NMR. So basically, they inject a living harmless non virulent strain of microbes to activate your uh, uh, immune system, uh, specifically memory cells. And the second type is kill or inactivated organism fragmented uh, microorgan um, fragmented microorganism or antigens produced by recombinant DNA technology okay they use a recombinant DNA technology to trigger your <coughs> immune response for example influenza vaccines and the last one is a toxoids right toxoid is uh, basically derived from a toxin Right. Toxin may produced by bacteria, but then the toxins from the bacteria, uh, you know, uh, has to be suppressed, right? Either by chemical or by heat treatments, so that the toxins uh, uh, can become in, inactive, right? So inactive forms of tox toxin we call it toxins. Okay, even though. Uh, the toxicity has been suppressed, but the immunogenicity properties is kept uh, in the toxoid so that uh, it only can cause uh, to trigger uh, the immune response. Okay, so it will not give you a, a very severe harm uh, to your body once it's been introduced or been injected. <clears throat> into your body system okay <clears throat> next is a passive immunity okay so passive immunity where the antibody come from the outside uh, outside the person's body give immediate but short life protections not permanent because the B cell never learned how to make them must be replaced if the immunity is uh, immunity is to continue to be continued. Okay, it means that it's compared to the active. Uh, active give a, a long term, but passive is a short terms. Okay, uh, because uh, in the short term wise, the B cell will not learn, so the B cell will cannot uh, produce memory cells to you know sort of like the uh, memory the, the uh, to memorize uh, the specific uh, antigens that invades into the, our uh, body system okay so yeah the keywords for passive immunity is short-term immunity okay there's two types you can acquire the passive immunity the first one from a natural source and the second one is uh, by artificials okay uh, the passive natural immunity, uh, for example, the transfer of maternal antibody across the placenta or by breath milk to the newborn baby provide immunity for several weeks or months until such antibody is degraded and lost. Antibodies protect against any invading pathogen that mother has encountered. Okay. So, uh, during you know, a newborn baby, Okay, newborn baby is very fragile, you know, the, the immune system uh, didn't develop uh, yet, not that not didn't develop yet, is, you know, will take time to develop. <coughs> and thanks to moms that, you know, it can be transferred, the mom can transfer uh, the, uh, the antibody towards the newborn. Uh, either by uh, across the placenta 
uh, IgG, right, immunoglobin uh, G, or uh, through the breast, breast milk. So this uh, temporary, temporary antibody can give a short protections to the newborns before the newborn can develop their immune systems by itself, by their, by their cells. Okay. And the second one is passive artificial immunity. Okay. The body develops immunity by receiving injections of antibody containing serums or immunoglobulin from another source artificially, such as by inject injecting serum from from other. Okay, this is uh, 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 totally different from immunizations. Okay, in, where in immunization you introduce either a toxoid or, or, or attenuated microbes or a kill microbes or their uh, fragment. Uh, 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 fragments of DNA, but then in the passive artificial immunity, they basically uh, it basically uh, introduce you uh, immunoglobulins, all right? IgG, I, Ig lah, Ig doesn't matter, IgG, M or U, so on and so forth. But then they introduce a direct immunoglobulins into your body systems. Okay, so that's why when they introduce uh, immunoglobulins the reaction is kind of very fast so it can you know tackle the disease immediately as compared to the immunization it will take time okay it can provide immediate but short term protection against the invading pathogen that are specifics uh, for uh, no, mem no memory cell are produced during the passive uh, artificial immunity okay Right, so this is example of passive artificial immunity, human being injected by HBIG, okay, a hepatitis B immunoglobulin to present hepatitis B in those not actively immunized by the Hep C vaccines. So <coughs> if you didn't get any Hep B vaccine, so if you get hepatitis B a disease, you can you know use human HBIG that, that directly give you a very fast. Uh, uh, activations of immune system. Okay, the second one is CMV, IgIV. CMV it stands for cytomegalovirus. All right, cytomegalovirus. Ig is immunoglobin, IV is intravenous. So it inject through your veins to prevent cytomegalovirus uh, infection in highly immunosuppressed individual. Okay, so basically CMV, I can say. Uh, it's not like normal flora. Right? Uh, it can invade uh, uh, anyone, but then for those that ha have uh, uh, a very good immune, immune systems, it will not give you any problem, uh, health pro pro problem issue. But then when the uh, immune system, immuno immunological systems of immunity is suppressed. Then CMV, uh, CMV uh, cytomegalovirus can be activated. Okay, let's go to vaccination. Sorry, right, vaccination is the produce uh, produ uh, procedure of injections of the vaccine to produce immunity against a disease. Okay, so injections of vaccines that what we call vaccinations. Okay, uh, vaccine as I mentioned. Uh, previously, typically, uh, typically contain an agent that resembles a disease causing microorganism and is often made from weakened or killed form of the microbes. It toxins or none of its surface are protein. Okay, so even though the microbe is weakened or is killed, but you know the antigen, the surface antigens of the microbes still available for the antibody to recognize, right? So it also enables the immune system to respond, means a person become immune without getting any symptoms. Okay, so hopefully in, in both cases. Okay. <coughs> uh, Booster shots. What is booster shot? Booster shot is repeated vaccinations that maintain larger populations of memory cells 
give rise to secondary immune response and show long-lasting immunity. So, uh, usually there is a, a, a few vaccines, okay, for example, uh, also in COVID-19, <coughs> basically it be advisable to take a twice uh, a shot. The first one is the normal shot vaccination and the second one should be a booster shot. So booster shot is where uh, uh, it, it can maintain, here it can maintain the levels of memory cells, okay? So that it will, it will you know, give a, a long lasting protections to your body, okay? Some vaccine contains many different antigens to protect against different strains of pathogen, the balance of risks and the benefits of vaccination is very crucial. Okay, so that's why in the fields of uh, vaccine uh, uh, productions, okay, pharma, uh, pharmaceutical, ph ph uh, not pharmaceutical, uh, pharmacology, pharma, pharmaceutical, eh? no, pharmaceutical, okay. So, in order to produce the vaccines, you have to follow a very strict. Uh, 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 rules. Okay, you have to undergo first uh, 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 where what we call a clinical trials. Okay, so after during the uh, clinical trial, preclinical trial, you have to test. Uh, you have to take uh, test the vaccines to the animals. Okay, so there is a few uh, requirement that need to be achieved in order. You know, we can say that okay. Uh, the picnical is already been uh, uh, fully uh, is successfully uh, 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 you know it, in other words that it doesn't give any effect to that particular animals then you can go to the next phase right the next phase where you have to give a trial to the uh, a groups of humans and if it is success then you have to go a second phase with a larger groups of uh, humans and if it's success, then you have to go to the, the third phase, right? More larger, more more large samples of humans need to be uh, injected by the trial vaccines. Okay, so kalau all the three phases is uh, uh, you know uh, successfully so didn't show any a uh, symptom uh, any in any major symptom, so we can cure the the. Uh, the efficiency is really higher so then you can you know uh, ask approval for this new developed vaccinations uh, by FDA so if it is okay so this one can be out of my crack market then baru vaccine to boleh uh, uh, dijual di crack market okay so basically it will take like two or three years in normals uh, 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 for developments of vaccinations okay. and in vaccination the components of vaccination there is two components the first one is antigens of course a piece of protein from bacteria or virus tells the immune system what to react this is a normal one and the second one is adjuvants, all right? Adjuvant. What is adjuvant? A component of vaccine that increase or aid or stimulates the immune system to react against the pathogen represented by the vaccine, other components. So I can say uh, adjuvant ni, they uh, you know, a helper, a helper to the antigens. So only antigens can boost up I mean, can increase the productions of, uh, uh, for example, an antibody. So it can be recognized by the immune system. But with the help of adjuvants, the activations of uh, uh, immune system is much higher. Right? So there is a lot of memory cells being produced. There is a lot of T, -t helper cells uh, uh, being recruited to that particular site. And, you know, uh, it will give a very, how to say, uh, a long, it will give the immune system a long period of time to develop a good memory cells. Okay? 
So for an example of adjuvant is aluminum hydroxide or uh, paraffin oil. The choice of adjuvant can make an enormous difference in how effectively a vaccine stimulates an immune response. Okay. So I can say that with, uh, with the adjuvants, uh, immune response also can be activated. But then, active antigen plus adjuvants uh, the immune response is highly activated. Okay. Okay. So this is the benefits and the danger of the vaccinations. You can read it on your own. Uh, all right. So let's go to herd immunity. What is herd immunity? Right. A form of immunity that occur when the vaccinations of a significant portions of a population provides a measure of protection for individual who have not developed immunity. Okay. So this is uh, the diagram of herd immunity. So that's why uh, uh, vaccination is very important. Okay. So KKM, Kementerian uh, Kesehatan Malaysia, dah banyak kali cakap vaccination that been you know offered in Malaysia has already been uh, go through uh, 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 a strict. Uh, rules, all right, where KKM does study, they already study uh, the effects of the vac uh, vaccines, all right, what the vaccine can, can, can you know, at least uh, cause a problem for your health, okay, so everything already been st studied, so you need to get a vaccine uh, when the time is comes. Okay, for example, yang tu ada anak nanti kan, so you can have vaccines accordingly according to the time given lah uh, by the KKM. You have to follow the schedule. Jangan jadi anti vaccines. Okay, so uh, this is example of uh, if only some get vaccinated. Okay, so the blue one is healthy non vaccinated. Okay, for example, ni kebanyakan orang orang tua lah, right? The old people that uh, you know. Yang zaman dulu uh, kita punya public health uh, uh, issue awareness tak tak banyak sorak tak ramai orang orang tu yang tak ambil vaksin, but then orang sehat, okay? So the uh, yellow color is healthy vaccinated, right? Yellow color ni orang yang vaksin, and the red one is non vaccinated, sick and contagious, okay? They boleh separate out all, all the diseases, okay? So Kalau seorang, kalau sam je ambil uh, vaksin yellow color, so we will not give a protections for those that healthy and not vaccinated. For example, orang orang tua lah, okay, you tak boleh nak provide uh, a shields like human shield, okay. But then, if most of you get vaccinated, orang orang tu nanti ramai orang ambil vaksin. Okay, budak-budak, orang tua, orang uh, apa ni, uh, middle age, or right, teenagers muda dapat vaksin. So, secara tak langsung, it can help give uh, uh, like a human shield for those are uh, healthy and not vaccinated. Okay, terutamanya uh, orang tua. Even though kat dalam uh, community tu ada seorang atau ada dua orang yang not vaccinated, sick and contagious. Okay, senang nak cakap lah. Senang cakap macam ni. Okay, you nak balik kampung uh, dalam zaman, zaman COVID ni kan. Okay, for example, nanti you tak ambil vaksin. So, of course, the old people yang kat kampung tu tak ambil vaksin. So, bila you tak ambil vaksin, you pun uh, 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 open to be infected. Okay, you pun balik kampung. Balik kampung, okay, cousin you balik. Cousin you dah infected. So, bila cousin you dah balik ke kampung, uh, or you, you yang tak vaksin uh, atau you tak vaksin pun semua dah kena uh, uh, disease yang, yang 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 boleh separate up. But then kalau you being vaccinated, you balik kampung, you give a sort protection to your uh, uh, atau anak ni. Walaupun cousin you yang kena infected tu balik kampung. Okay, so that that's a term what we call the herd immunity. Right, so this is uh, how to strengthen your immune system. So you can, you know, you can read it on your own. Lah. So you can eliminate, you have to eliminate all the sugars from your diet. Okay, Eliminate sugar is very important. 
and reduce exposure to dangerous uh, toxins in your environment. You know, like smoking. You know, avoid to to uh, sit down or standing nearby smoking people. Uh, you regular moderate exercise. All right. To uh, strengthen your immune system, learn how to properly deal with stress. Okay, nowadays students nak tambah tambahnya. Uh, not student lectures but any stress during this uh, pandemic COVID you know, kita kena belajar online and everything but then you have to learn how to deal with stress properly okay? it gives like positive vibes uh, to, you, to your body and sleep helps strengthen your immune system sleep also right you have to sleep very well jangan tidur lambat tidur ke 2 kamp ke 5 ke 6 nak kena bangun balik untuk subuh it's not good to, to your body Drink plenty of water, eating a nutrition, nutritionist uh, diet, and wash your hand regularly. Okay, so you can test yourself later on uh, with these questions. All right, so how some of the COVID vaccine is complex? So this one I took it from uh, BBC, okay, uh, the source from WHO, World Health Organization. Okay. So, sekarang ni, at this time, Basically, this is a one, two, three, four. There is a four a gigantic uh, company that produce. Mm, ada banyak lagi, but then this is only four gigantic company that produce a uh, vaccines uh, for COVID nineteen. And if you can see here, uh, there is a two RNA base, right? This is uh, Pfizer, uh, BioNTech, and Moderna. And also viral vectors, right? From Oxford, uh, AstraZeneca, Zeneca, and uh, Sputnik V. Okay. <coughs> so there is a difference, a modes of uh, uh, to deliver uh, the, the the vaccines into our body systems. Okay. So. If uh, for RNA, right? RNA, RNA need the just transfer RNA, RNA of the RNA of the virus. Okay, some part of the virus. Okay, some part of the virus to protein. They can trans. They can you know undergo. Um, uh, 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 what we call it? Reverse transcriptase. Okay, that can be mRNA. Daripada protein tu akan jadi uh, mRNA balik daripada mRNA uh, Baru dia akan inject kat dalam our body system So mRNA ni tadi dia akan cover with uh, lipid nanoparticles okay. uh, uh, Apa yang awak belajar uh, nanoparticles ni basically uh, uh, ni lah uh, Membrane bilayer okay, Phospholipid bilayer so they are can cover the mRNA, then the mRNA to be introduced into our body systems. Okay, so now I'm talking about RNA. So we later introduce into our body systems the lipid bilayer that carry the RNA can diffuse either in the norm, in into a normal cells or be engulfed by the macrophage or I don't know. Uh, other genetic cells as well. Okay. So, bila they dah uh, fused into a normal cell or be engulfed by macrophage, it will uh, undergo a, a, a fragmented or process in the cells and later on, the fragments of the RNA ataupun fragments of the protein that have been translated, uh, transcribed translated in the host cell be introduced in, into the surface, uh, on the surface of the cells by MHC1 or MHC2. So this MHC1, MHC2, they uh, you know, represent the part of the RNA that can be recognized by, uh, you know, uh, T helper cells, ataupun uh, cytotoxic T cells. Okay. So after being recognized by the T helper cell, baru that can you know uh, release the cytotoxins, and the cytotoxins will be activates or, or, or you know um, uh, will help nine B cell to undergo proliferates and differentiates into plasma and uh, memory cell so this this plasma cell yang akan release up the new developed antibody 
toward the specific uh, COVID-19 Okay, so bila COVID-19 masuk dalam badan kita So, plasma membrane tadi dah, dah ada dah Memory cell kita dah ada dah Okay, so you can, you know, uh, secret out all the antibody To the specific COVID-19 Okay, that one is RNA Untuk viral vector sama juga As I known, so for Oxford uh, AstraZeneca ni They use Chimp uh, adenovirus, chimpanzee and it adenovirus. Okay, so dia pakai uh, DNA. Alright, dia pakai uh, instead of RNA, dia pakai DNA dan modify the uh, adenovirus tu. Adenovirus tu dia akan introduce through vaccinations and that can invade kita punya host cell. So kita punya cell kat dalam badan lah. Sama juga proses dia. Okay, boleh dah invade, dah akan you know secret out, secret in the DNA of the virus. Okay. So the, the DNA As they said Dia tak akan uh, Engage with the host DNA Dia tak akan diffuse into the host DNA So instead of diffuse Into the host DNA Dia akan undergo Translation, transcription process So that can be protein So protein virus theory Again will be introduced into the surface Of the cell by NHC1 And NHC2 Okay, so basically the the different is the types of uh, 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 the types of what you can say the the modes of mechanism and difference. Okay, the modes of mechanism, the type of delivery of the vaccine is different, but then the end product is the same lah. Okay, the uh, antibodies towards COVID nineteen. So if you rajin, you can find out all the informations. Uh, Google uh, the informations about the COVID nineteen vaccines. The uh, uh, internet. Okay, even there is a YouTube channel that that uh, you know explain to you in detail each company and each type of the vaccine they produce. Okay. So <coughs> I think that's it until now. Mm, so if you have any questions. Uh, freely to ask me, uh, WhatsApp me directly. Kalau ada apa-apa soalan lah. Okay. So, till then, okay class, thank you so much. Uh, hope to see you guys on chapter 7. Chapter 7 ne? Eh, but then chapter 7 nanti you you akan, ya, yeah, you akan, you yang akan uh, uh, present. Right? You yang akan ajar yourself. Right? Okay, so, yeah, we meet again during uh, the last class of week. Okay, thank you so much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.